more. You know, you, you, you put them on a hand most of the time, and that's what Carlos is worried about here, that his ace-10 is not good. In fact, we know it's not because of the WPT cam. Well, at this point, you really got to say that Randy's been, you know, playing like it's a human roadmap. And Carlos is on to it at this point. Now, remember, folks, he's playing a pot against a former world champion, and he's got him hemmed up about as good as you can. He's got ace-jack against ace-10. Well, Randy would be begging for this call. He would be a huge favorite. He would double up and put him right back in contention. Can Randy Berger do it? And look at this. He's called it. He's going to make the call. Gonna he's not going to like it over. when he sees it. He's not going to like what he's up against here, Vince. Carlos oh, has to catch a 10. Oh, and he grimaces as he looks at that. He knows what a dog he is. He knew it, Vince. He sensed that he was beating that hand. Last card coming up. Well, he's got to catch a 10 to win, Vance. He's a big, big underdog right now to win this pot. Carlos standing up. Here it comes. Randy will double up. Oh, oh my oh. God. Oh. Holy oh. smoke. Unbelievable right there. Carlos got lucky this time. He got real unlucky against David earlier. Poor Randy. You've got to feel oh. for him. That's an awful beat. I know you have it. I know you have it. That is a dagger in your heart. You fought your way all the way to this final table. You can't get your money in a better spot, Vince. Uh, you know, when that happens, you, you want to throw away all your poker literature. You know, it's devastating. Well, that is tough luck for Randy Berger, but give this guy credit. He won this trip to the lovely Borgata here on a $12 online satellite. He's taken home $41,125, a magnificent performance by Randy Berger from Mesa, Arizona. In the meantime, Carlos Mortensen is one happy guy. One of the players is gone. Down to five with a half a million at stake. Well, you've taken $12 and turned it into 40000 That's pretty impressive. Yeah. Um, that's, that's the good part. Unfortunately, the way, the way I went out was an uh, awful tough way to go. You know, you get this far and uh, you, just, you may, this is, this is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity and you want to you wanna go all the way, especially on a hand like that. Mm -hmm. that's, uh, you know, that's, just, that's about the worst way you can possibly lose. Oh. Good luck. I just can't lose like that. Dad, that's not the way it's supposed to end. Welcome back to the World Poker Tour at the Borgata Poker Open in Atlantic City. Owen. Novice Randy Berger just got burned on the river <laughs> with an all-in bad beat against Spanish champion Carlos Mortensen. Holy Whoa. smoke! Carlos continues his bandit style, going after rival David Oppenheim. Carlos says all-in. The L.A. kid maintains a fight on two fronts, battling Carlos and retired architect Noli Francisco. But New York Noli has designs of his own. He's going up. He has raised it. Showing David some old school poker on a wild ride to the river. Horse owner Mickey Siegel continues to jockey for his position, doubling up on an all-in race with Noli. Well, I got the best of it now. Finally, insurance exec Charlie Shoten follows his own policy, staying alive with a conservative approach. Charlie made three nines. With five players remaining, it's still anyone's game in this battle at Borgata. Here we go, back to the action. Well, Vance, the blinds are now 10,000 and 20,000. Antes remain at 2,000. Charlie's first. Now it's going to be on Charlie Shoten. He folds, they do soft suit. Very patient today, Charlie. And look at this, Noli picks up a king-queen. Well, nice hand, he's going to raise it here. 50. 50,000, he makes it. Mickey going out. Carlos as well goes out with a 5-3. Now look at this. David in the big blind has picked up ace-jack offsuit. I'm all in. He's gone all in with advance. 225,000. Ball. Ball. Noli quickly calls 175,000 more with a king-queen. Ace-jack. You're in trouble. King-queen for Noli. We got Ace Jack against King Queen. Right now, David's about a three to two favorite. I got him forward. David has to have his hand hold up or he'll be eliminated in fifth position. 
Go on, chop it. Yeah. He only asked if he wanted to chop it. He knows he's the underdog. But as we've seen before today, Seven, that doesn't eight, necessarily mean five. anything. Okay, so what we're going to do here. Ace Jack against King Queen. Let's have a flop. Here comes the flop. Flop is 10 7 4. No help at all. Nola's going to have to have a king or a queen. Here's 4th Street. A nine comes off. Nine. Now that means any face card will win for Noli. Picture card. Pair the board. Picture card. Last card coming up. It's a ten. David's going to double up here. Oh, that is a big double up for David. Well, the best hand held up. 470,000 goes into David's stack. What a beautiful ending to this hand. Well, Vince, the six players who started tonight are survivors. They've battled over every hand for three days, and that takes its toll. You're right. Now, Shauna Hyatt took a look at the mental toughness it takes to win, and she found out that the players that do well have to hang on till the music stops. This week's Poker Corner brought to you by Anheuser World Select. In the 1930s, dance marathons were all the rage here on the boardwalk in Atlantic City. So what does a Depression-era craze have to do with the 21st century poker tournament? Well, days on end, exhaustion, cash. A WPT No Limit tournament can last anywhere from three to five days. A massive field of players spends eight to 12 hours a day at the table knowing any hand could be their last hand. Oh, blah, dee, oh, blah, da. Life goes on. 300 deals a day. Check, bet, raise, fold. One mistake along the way and the dance is over. It keeps us playing for 12, 14 hours at a time. There must be something there. I don't know what it is, but I know it keeps me awake. But can you really get physically exhausted from playing poker? I mean, you're only dealt two cards and you don't even have to hold them up. You really have to have some stamina to make it through three days and still be able to focus and concentrate and play good poker. Poker is a test of wills. You against your opponent and you against yourself. But if you can endure and keep dancing, well, the music at the end is very sweet indeed. Three days these guys have been playing for. That's a long time. So let's see what happens. Will age hold out? Will the old geezers stall off the young whippersnappers? Here we go. I like the way David played that last pot, and he has now moved into third chip position with 562,000 in chips. Noli has a little over 600,000. Our chip leader right now is Carlos Mortensen. All right, here we go. Back on Charlie. He's going out with a 5-4. No, but nobody called. Here comes Noli bouncing right back here. Pair of nines. He raises the pot, comes in for 60,000. But Mickey's got an ace five of clubs. Another good lay down by him. Now look at Carlos here. He's got ace jack off suit. He's in the small blind. He's going to raise it, Vance. I'd expect no less. 150,000. David goes out with 6 4, back on Noli with his pair of nines. I'm all in. Noli said all in. Oh, he's going to do it. Oh, what a bold play with a pair of nines right there by Noli Francisco. Oh. I mean, that takes a lot of heart, Vince. Oh, that's a kick in the back right into Carlos. Whoa. How much you have there? Now, keep in mind, these are the two chip leaders <coughs> that are clashing, Vince. These guys got the money, and they're battling. Oh, yeah, there's no intimidation here. I Both mean, champions. You talk about your critical moments. This is it. It's life or death for one of these guys, virtually. This is what poker's all about. Okay. Now here comes the stare down. Is Noli putting a move on him here? Carlos giving the old Jack the Ripper eyes. Don't let him push you around. <laughs> yeah, David said don't let him push you around. Well, David wants to see somebody go broke so he can move up into money standings. 450 more. Now look at this. Once again, Carlos making a man oh. talk how much you got. He wants to see the reaction of this man, Nooley. Wants him to talk, see how his hands move, if they're shaking a little bit. Try to pick up some type of tell. I'm amazed at all the tough, tough decisions that Carlos and David Oppenheim have had to come up with today, Vince. And here's another one for you right here. Look at the look on Carlos' face. He's trying to check out his opponent. Come on, I might show you a bluff. Noli. Interesting talk there. All 
right. Once Thank again, you can't help but admire Carlos's instincts. He lays the hand down. It was a virtual coin flip. Okay. Look at this, and everybody's happy this poker game. <laughs> and they're smiling, both of them now. Oh, that's a poker yeah. laugh. That's a winner's laugh right there. You try to fake that, you can't get that. Noli has it. Exciting action at Morgana. Stay tuned, we'll be right back. You just have to keep playing and observe your opponents and remember whoever's in the pot with you is a certain type of player, and then you remember the results of what happened, and you play accordingly. I think that's the whole secret to poker. Welcome back to the beautiful Borgata Casino in Atlantic City. We started three days ago with 235 players. We are down to five, Mike. Tremendous action at Borgata on the World Poker Tour events. Let's not forget the winner will make $470,000, <clears> plus <throat> have that guaranteed $25,000 seat at the championships at the end of the season worth potentially millions. All right, the action's on Nola here. He's got seven deuce this time. Throws not going to call. Nicky's got a jack six. He's not going to call. Carlos, just a 10-3 off suit. Lousy hand, but he's in position on the button where he likes to raise. He throws it away Folds. with force, oh, if you hurt. noticed. Uh, David Oppenheim has a 6-5, a spade, a suited connector. A lot of pros like to play this kind of hand. And he raises it the minimum allowed, 20,000. Remember, blinds are 10 and 20,000. He made it 40,000. Oh, but he might be doing it at the wrong time because oh. Charlie just picked up a monster pair of aces. The raise of 40,000. He's got the American Airlines. He's making it 80,000. Makes it 80,000 now. A really nice, subtle raise right there. Sort of ensuring himself action here. I like this play by Charlie. Right back on David. What's he going to do? Is he going to get fancy or not? Well, he's going to call because the raise was the amount that's going to entice him to call here. Just a call. We're going to see a flop. Here it comes. Flop is 4-4 four, four, deuce. Notice this gives David a straight throw. A three would make him a straight. David checks. And Charlie checks right behind him. Oh, he's doing a little trap play. Here comes 4th Street. Now, an eight of diamonds. now the eight comes off on the turn. This gives David a two-way straight now. A three or a seven would make him a straight. He's checking again. And Charlie goes all in with his two aces this time. You see this? David is showing his hand, kind of. I've never seen a professional player ever show his hand, kind of flash it back, and then call. <laughs> you know, it's, it's uh, there it goes again. Hey, you're right, Vince. He folds. I love the way Charlie played that hand, Vince. Well, Charlie is a very intelligent player. And you know something? In life, he's a very interesting man. He does a thing called reversal, in which he has someone tape record all of his conversations and then reverse it, and he finds out things about himself. What are you talking about? I don't know. But they say it's true. I had been in the computer software business for 20 years, and I've always been an executive or in marketing or in management in the life insurance industry. On the surface, Charles Scotty Warbuck Shoten may seem like your classic career man. But as we know, in poker, looks can sometimes be deceiving. In order to get become a better poker player, I had to become a better person. And I'm aware of all the energy on the table, all the different players, and the flow of the game. Until I was able to really be present in the moment, my game was not that good. And it's that same Zen approach that has definitely taken Charlie down the road less traveled. An old Hawaii shaman has been an important influence in my life. What he's taught me has been very, very important to me. Cleaning everything out of your system so you could be like just a plate of glass. And even with so much riding on this event, for this sage, the strategy is simple. I just notice the thoughts that are not helping me, let it go, and just trust that some other force, a higher power, will uh, dissolve it. And, it. and it works. Not at the poker table only, but every moment of my life. The man right there is doing quite well here. Whatever he's doing, I think I'm going to start doing it. Well, you're right. He's a very intellectual kind of guy.